six. We welcome, okay. We welcome everyone to this March 26, 2024 meeting of the Corsicana ISD Board of Trustees. This is a special meeting and all items that will be discussed have been duly posted. While this is a meeting in public, it is not a meeting of the public. If you wish to speak, please register in the lobby on the audience for guest form and follow the information on the speaker form. This board's role is to set goals, approve personnel and budgets, make policy, and provide oversight. We are not here to manage or solve individual problems. Management is responsibility of the superintendent. As a board, we believe that we must educate every child, provide every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and maintain a safe and secure environment mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. These are our core values, and we appreciate your interest in the students of CISD. So we have a quorum. All board members are present. You missed the best, the best introduction ever. <laughs> All right, so we go to our, we don't have an, do we have an audience for guests? Thank you, sir. All right, we're going to in the discussion action items, the pre-K Carroll Elementary. Dr. Brown, Dr. Frost, esteemed board members, thank you for letting me speak. Um, so I know it says pre-K and Carol, but we're going to kind of go one way to get back to the other really quickly just because the two programs touch each other and it lets you know why we are doing what we're doing. So um, just a quick review, we're going to kind of review the ESL or bilingual programs of the district to get into, like I said, why we're moving pre-K. So. Um, if you're not familiar uh, with our ESL and bilingual program, so really where this is, is this is our students that come to us speaking a language other than English. Um, we have an amazing, diverse population of students, um, and a really cool part about that is that we have a large amount of students that come into us speaking Spanish. We house the Regional Day School Program for the Deaf, so some of those kiddos come in that their first language is American Sign Language. We have many other languages that are happening in the homes, and so this is our way of bridging that to make sure that they have good academic success. Um, for their entire educational career, not just in this moment, but for their entire life. So Miss Molly Corrington, who is with us, is who leads that um, within our department. She has done it. Do you say what? <laughs> That's at class A. <laughs> well, she does a great job. Uh. <laughs> She does a beautiful job. She has completely kind of worked through some different areas in the program this year, and it's it's been really good, and that kind of leads us to where we are today. So just as kind of an overview, we do have English as a second language in our district. We have transitional bilingual, which is like early exit. That's a self-contained setting where they're working through that. Um, and then we have dual language, which some, some of you are very familiar with, um, and that's the immersive program where they're getting English and Spanish at the same time. Um, just some quick graphs. Um on, on this side, you can see our emergent bilinguals and how far we have tracked up in four years. So this is 2020 to 2024. Um, and then over here is our dual, langu dual language immersion program, which it has tracked up as well. Obviously, that is one campus, so you're not going to see overwhelming growth, but you should see some. Uh, but our biggest thing to kind of focus on here is that r this year, 30% of Tigers are emergent bilinguals. Um, that is a huge group of students, and so um, to make sure that we are really addressing their needs, we have to know kind of what they need um, because it is a, it is a big, big group. Um, these are from last year to this year. That one's just a cool graphic, so don't look at that one. But your blue on this side is um, last year to this year of within our ESL classes, um, our um, bilingual ed classes and then the totals so you can see that this we're, we're continuing to balance we're really pushing these numbers there's all kinds of guidelines and requirements that go along with this um, like for like uh, for example um, we have to be what we call 60 40 which means in dual language programs we have to have 60 percent emergent bilinguals and 40 percent non-emergent bilinguals for these things to work and so uh, that's just a requirement that we have to meet we have to offer a program to students that meet certain criteria it's a state law we have to do those things and so we want to make sure that we're serving them well so we're meeting all of those criteria and this will help us do that 
in an even better way. So our current efforts, I'm just going to kind of leave those up there. I know you guys can read, read through them. The biggest ones to kind of look at are our acquisition programs. Those are things that have been studied and looked for by our team specifically Molly Corrington um, to make sure that we're meeting those needs and they have access outside of school but in moving forward this is kind of what is coming and this is why it says pre-k um, so you'll see we have some parent and family engagement that's been a big focus of our program this year is to make sure that our parents are aware um, if their kiddo falls in a group where they might need a little bit more help that the parents are right there on board with us um, and then May 18th there's going to be an emergent bilingual parent expo that's all of our campuses together um, but if you'll notice the bottom two are bolded and larger because that's some significant change that we want you guys to be aware of um, so we're looking to move pre-k our dual language pre-k from Sam Houston and move them over to Carroll Elementary so that they're with our other pre-k's and then we're moving our Carroll one-way program over to Sam Houston so that we can centralize both and some of us okay well, why are we doing that well what it allows us to do is we can focus training, we can make sure those programs are thriving, we can function within Carroll, really kind of that wing, almost like an early childhood center style, like that's our focus. We know that pre-Kers need certain things, and it's not the same as third graders, right? It's, it's very specific. It's that good play-based, good language instruction, what that looks like in their, in their classroom. So that would be over at Carroll. We've got everybody together working together, and then all of... Uh, Sam Houston would really function as the district's hub, beacon, if you will, for our bilingual programs, um, for those parents that get to choose and say, okay, no, I, I just want them in, in this type. They're going to stay at home campus. It'll be an ESL situation. Or, nope, yep, let's put them into Sam Houston. We want them to have both. Uh, but they have those options, and we're really able to focus those options by doing that. Some of you are familiar with Gomez and Gomez. Our pre-K will still get Gomez and Gomez over at, at Carroll, but it won't be pre and then tracking up in two different places. It will be that we'll be able to focus those in those specific areas and really see some good growth. Any questions? Thoughts, concerns, all the things? Okay. Sure. Sure. And on um, these, when you toggle over them, it will actually give you the specific data, so percentages, numbers, things like that. Uh, but yeah. Uh, well, I can. So, so now this one is bilingual ed, uh, but that's going to be both campuses. So our dual language immersion is 502 right now. Is that just the CBC Yes, no. yes, because that's going to be both. That's they're getting English and Spanish. And, and Collins. And Collins. Oh, and Collins. Yes. Collins. We have three groups within <coughs> Collins, but they are one way uh, at Collins. It's also two way. It's two way at Collins. The pod, three classes, and, the then, and then all of Sam Houston. Four so thirty. That one, yeah. Okay, so that's totally. Yes. Sean, okay. yes. Sean said it's four thirty at Sam. Yeah. Okay. The latest. So four thirty at Sam. So that would that would include both. Sure. Yeah. So we're moving Sam Houston pre K over to Carol. So all yes. So all of our pre K's are together. And then right now we have groups over at Carol that are kind of by themselves. Um, and so we would move those groups over to Sam Houston. If the parents would get to choose, obviously. I mean, they would say yes or no. But it would allow our bilingual programs to be housed together and to be focused together and our pre-Ks to be housed together and focused together. So what do you have? Uh, yeah, so you're saying programs. So it's not the pre-K so it's pre so the pre-k that is currently housed at Sam Houston would go to Carroll with our all of our other pre-k's okay. and so our um, school age bilingual programs will come to Sam so so we won't have two campuses trying to kind of function the same type of stuff at two different places mm -hmm. yeah no so well 
So no, it kind of naturally they tend to, to stay together because Sam being elective and the siblings kind of staying together. If anything, it would aid that. Like it would, it would help families. If a family said, hey, I want to keep all of my kiddos together um, and working this program because at Carroll it stops, next year it will stop at second grade. So this way they actually get to keep tracking if they choose to in that dual language all the way through fifth grade at Collins. Uh, but if, but no, it wouldn't separate families. Well, unless they have a pre k -er, or, or because our pre-K would all be at Carroll. Or I'm sorry, yes, at Carroll, yeah. And pre-K is, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you think anything, let me know. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Frost, uh, Dr. Brown, and distinguished members of the board. I'm here today to request approval for the adoption of the science instructional materials that you have on the attached recommended list. The instructional materials uh, committee was made up of 22 district teachers. Um, this also included instructional coaches as well as district administrators. And the process that we utilized to select the materials included narrowing down the list of vendors to those whose materials um, adopted or addressed the 100% of the TEKS. And we used two specific tools for um, narrowing down those list of vendors, and that was the Texas Resource Review from TEA as well as a State Board of Education adoption list. And once we went through that, then there were six vendors that we selected. From those six vendors, we then set up meetings and they came and they presented to us. And based upon, and the reason why that they came to present to us is so that the teachers could make a more informed decision. Um, the committee then did vote. The teachers were asked to use the rubric that was created by the Texas Science Education Leadership, Leadership Association to evaluate each of the vendors on the quality of their curriculum materials. All grade bands then did vote and a unanimous decision was made to select SAVIS, which included digital and print materials with the lab materials kits. Um, and I think that you guys have that list of those materials. A few of the comments that the teachers did have, um, did say about SAVAS included that specifically that there were a lot of different supports for teachers, specifically new teachers, and because some of the teachers had noted that, and these are department heads that were part of that selection committee, had said that they were in need of teach materials that, um, not necessarily step by step, but did show them the process of teaching and how that they would utilize those instructional materials. And one thing that they really did like was that there were individual unit and lesson videos, as well as content created to support the new teachers. And that also included those teachers who may not be as familiar with the science and teaks in, within their own grade level. And so they could also re-familiarize themselves in that way. Um, one of the other things that a teacher had said was that the materials were easy to navigate and understand. Um, and then several of the high school teachers noted that Canvas, which is the learning management system we have at the high school and, well, and throughout the district, um, is that Canvas and Savas that they communicate well and it's easily easy to take the materials from Savas and to upload those to um, Canvas and vice versa. And that also the rostering as well as the grading, once something is graded, then they can also transfer that back and forth. Um, one of the other pieces that they really did find helpful was that there were supports for students with uh, different languages other than the English. And they found that for students it's just a toggle switch that they could and they could turn the language selection, whichever one that they chose, on or off. Um, and it worked with, actually worked with Google Translate. And the teachers did find too that one of the other pieces that they liked was that the materials themselves that they could easily uh, translate the materials for students and even print them. Um, one of the like one of the moments too that a lot of teachers almost really just clapped and they were so excited about was that they had completed lesson plans and they were not only easily accessible but they were also editable so that teachers could then take those lesson plans and they could edit them to be to the content that they were using and the layout that they wanted. Um, most of the science materials 
with other companies didn't have a K through 12 adoption available. Um, they would have K through five or K through eight, but Savas did offer a K through 12 platform. So it kind of, it allows for us to do, um, to be able to speak the same language whenever we're talking to teachers and training them and um, setting up uh, trainings with throughout the summer for them as well. And one of the other pieces that we did find too is that not all companies offered AP content, but Savas did offer AP content. And AP, uh, Savas, you may have heard the name Pearson before. So, uh, Savas is Pearson. So if you've, you've heard Pearson before, Savas has rebranded itself into, or Pearson has rebranded itself into Savas. Uh, the last thing that they did like was the complete science kits that they have available, and that just allowed for a lot of different hands-on experiences. And that is it. Thanks. Okay. Um, I'm looking at this, and there's a high school ex experience chemistry. Yes, ma'am. And then on the bottom part, on the AP section. Yes, ma'am. Chemistry is not mentioned. Was there an AP so, chemistry or? Okay, so one of the reasons why that chemistry, it, there is a chemistry available, and we may very well have to not this coming year, but the next year, adopt a chemistry uh, book, but. Um, what I found is that there's a rotation between environmental science and chemistry and the number of students that take that AP class and so only every other year do they offer that class. Okay. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Any other questions? Then I'll entertain a motion. I move that we approve the state of recommended materials and adopt the materials on the attached <coughs> recommended list. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the state recommended materials and adopt the materials on the attached recommended list. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Ayes have it. And we will approve the state recommended materials and adopt the materials on the attached recommended list. Okay. We are going to adjourn into closed session as permitted by Texas Government Code 551.01.